Hello again everyone, Coney is here. Today I'm flying from Orlando International to Jacksonville International in Florida. I'm flying a King Air 350i Beechcraft with a burgundy livery. And so let's go ahead and get started. I've set a flight level of 2,000 feet. Take off the parking brake and here we go. Try to push the engines up to the limit. Okay, over torquing them. Pulling back on the throttle a little bit. Also trying to keep this thing going straight down the runway. going in the right direction. KH3 Magger 1 continue for north departure. I will contact you next when you leave my airspace. Okay, landing gear up. Orlando Tower KH3 Magger 1 flaps continue up. for north departure. Okay, we've got a little bit off course, but it should be easy to correct that. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and turn the course over to autopilot. Okay, sometimes it's hard to turn the yaw damper on. There we go. Okay. So that'll keep us going in the right direction. It's going to fine tune our heading now. Plus, I want to go up to 2000, so we'll give it that command as well. I'm not sure why the plane Orlando gets jerky Tower sometimes KH3 when I've got both kinds of uh, auto, you know, autopilot going at the same time, uh, navigation and flight level change. Seems like it got a little jerky. I might also have been pressing a little bit on the rudder, one of the rudder pedals. Hit B for barometer. Okay, so that was quite a bit off. Squawk 1521KH391. Contact two miles south of executive two thousand two hundred feet. Clear through the Bravo airspace. Maintain all Back at the throttle, level off. Uh, I mean, since we're level enough. And let's put on follow mode. So we can check on the plane this way. Yeah, my speed's way too high. I thought, suspected that might be the case. That would pay attention. Um, but that's the thing with autopilot, it'll level off when it reaches altitude, and it's up to you to going at the right speed. So I might end up trading this plane in for another one. Seems like my planes accumulate damage if I'm a little rough on them. And I noticed at one point one of my King Airs um, just, I don't know, did all, started doing all kinds of weird things. Okay, I'm gonna go back on, go back to the center detent on the throttle stick. So with the drone, I wanted to go pick out or check out this area around here. Winter Park. I'm not sure what Winter Park is, but for some reason that is an important landmark.
interesting, these buildings that are at a curve along the um, railroad line. Now you can see that they've got what look like railroad lines from the satellite photo, but no actual tracks. Um, you'd think they'd be able to put the tracks in. But it, in any case, it does look like a railway line from the air, so that's yeah, reasonable enough. Some of the buildings are rather weirdly shaped. I don't know if this is a real building. It doesn't really look like that. Um, <laughs> I mean, there's no parking or anything in here, so who knows? Okay, I'm gonna go check on the plane. <laughs> I kind of like the burgundy livery. I wouldn't mind if it was combined with another color. Looks pretty much red from the sandal. Look like the sun that way. Okay, so as far as the drone goes, I think what I'll do is I'll reset to the plane, keep synchronized, and then just see if there's anything interesting. Just busy reloading all these textures. Can't blame it for t taking the time it needs to do that. Okay, because I reset it, I need to change this. I couldn't find a setting to make that a different default. Kind of like this little snaking water line here, water waterway. It does look like we're a little bit out in the middle of nowhere, though. I suppose that's a giant lake. Um, I'm guessing this is some kind of an evaporation pond, maybe? Okay, we're still on follow mode. Frequency change approved. It uh, makes it a little hard to inspect things, so we'll turn that off. Zero. Frequency change approved KH3 uh, yeah, I'm curious what this little tiny Piece of Daytona land here approach KH391 is uh, type Beechcraft King Air Tree, miles southeast of six Fox Trot Delta I six. Doubt Request flight following. It really looks like this in real life. I mean, it looks like a landscaped tiny plot of dirt. I'm guessing it's probably a roadway, and it just is confused about what Squawk one four three four KH391. Looks like it connects up. Well, hmm. I don't know. Very strange. Maybe it's just some kind of a barrier. Different colored field here. Not sure what city this is. Deltona, okay. Alright, so it looks like a bunch of houses around a little lake in the center. Um, seems a little odd, but I guess that's probably normal. Just a lot of flat land with uh, a lot of green and a lot of houses. Um, what do we have over here? This looks like just a big housing tract. This must be the major highway through here. Perhaps an interstate. I saw a truck just appear out of nowhere here. Do 
doing a better job with bridges. Is this one actually penetrable? Oh, it is. Okay, what do you know? Look at that. Nice. Cars are floating. This must be the future. Alright, well, we're passing Deltona now. kind of headed generally in the direction of our destination airport. I wish they had the high-res photogrammetry. I'd love to know what this area really looks like. When I switched from full high def to 4K, I lost all the high detailed photogrammetry. I guess they don't have richly detailed enough data for that. Um, the stuff they did have, where for instance you could see logos on buildings and whatnot, was super low resolution as it was, so it's not going to look good at all in 4K. What an interesting bunch of buildings over here. Strange that houses also would just sort of be in the middle of these big green areas, but in any case, I guess clusters of apartment buildings or something. I'm going to go check on the plane. Speed, altitude is good. Heading is good. Check on the engines. Those dials are all good as well. Alright. We're good. Alright, so where am I now? Okay, looks like a small airport here. Delland, Muni, Sydney. I have all the vehicles set to max, I think. Well, for the most part. Some of them, I think like boats, I maybe have set to 50%. Alright, uh, anyway. Just admiring the light. Looks like some interesting afternoon fog here. It's 4.12 in the afternoon here in Florida. <laughs> I wonder why the fog is hugging the ground. Of course, this is the game's interpretation of weather data, so who knows. But it seems plausible. Don't know what the local temperature is. I could check that in the plane, actually. Let's see. Um, fifty-seven, fifty-eight. That's not bad. It's not freezing cold. It's going to be a little warmer on the ground than we're experiencing, I think. I prefer to switch to the drone from the external view so it's easy to switch back and check out all the dials. Alright, so uh, let's see, where is our destination? <coughs> I think I'll reset to the plane again.
Oh, we went inside instead of restarting the glitch. There we go. Kinda like this water. Not sure why I'm drawn to water. Maybe I'm dehydrated all the time. Still a lot of ground fog back there. Let's just go inside for a while. quieter. We can look around from in here. I guess this would be called a wind wing, like in a Volkswagen bus or something. Glad the co-pilot was taking care of all the radio traffic. It's, it's kind of like this top-down I guess this would be like trying to get up on your knees down here or something. I don't know. Or maybe you could stand, actually. Looks like you can stand. Yeah, of course. It's a, it's a walk-in airplane. You can stand here. Okay, so assume we're standing. Or let's say a passenger was visiting the cockpit. This is what they would probably see. And as they focus their attention, their brain would zoom in a little bit. They wouldn't have any idea what any of these knobs and dials do, but they wouldn't care. They trust the pilot. What they don't realize is the pilot's not doing anything at all right now. Just sitting here, doing absolutely nothing. I do have to keep an eye on the throttle and be prepared to make changes if we get too, you know, if we get close and whatnot. But otherwise, not doing much. It would be nice to be able to enter a character and walk around back here. You can float around with the drone, but. The drone and the plane are, um, I think you have to turn off follow mode to go inside and then they're disconnected so they're jo jostling around with each other so it's not a very stable way to look around back there. I'd still like to know what these red things are. I should probably study the 350i manual. Just studying manuals is not my thing. Okay, I'm gonna go back outside. Look around here a little bit. The weather is very interesting. Just get clouds in the air, clouds on the ground. Otherwise, it's bright and sunny. The temperature's moderate.
reset the drone view. And reset the external view. This that. And let's go back inside. Alright, so we still got 41 miles to go. That won't take very long. One two zero decimal seven five KH three nine one. Now would be a good time to Jackson beat a pack of launch or KH three nine one two thousand feet. KH three nine one Jacksonville approach. Continue as planned. Altimeter three zero decimal two five. It's kind of interesting to watch the elevator trim here as the autopilot is continuously adjusting it. Now, of course, the game could cheat. You know, it's creating all the wind, and it could cheat with secret knowledge about the weather and the autopilot that way. I'm hoping that it's actually responding to the physics. I think it is. It seems likely that it's actually going through the whole physics processing chain to do the autopilot. Probably wouldn't be realistic without doing that. I'm going to go back outside for a minute. We're at a good altitude, so I don't need to worry about dropping um, I assume that's clouds off in the distance. Okay, I thought maybe it was snowy mountains, but that wouldn't make sense here in Florida. So, okay, anyway, like I said, going outside. Just a little bit more looking around. It's kind of gotten dreary outside. The sun's up there, but it's not shining. So for a long time I found out I had two problems with my graphics. One, I didn't realize the game had reverted them to absolute lowest settings after a game update, so that was a problem. Uh, but the other one was the software I'm using to overclock my GPU, it, I didn't realize that it reverts when you close it. And so I wasn't actually getting the overclocking I thought I was. So now I've got that all sorted out, and I've got the settings fine-tuned. It looks really good. The first thing I noticed when I had the settings wrong was anti-aliasing looked off. You could see, you know, uh, jiggling off in the distance. You don't see any of that now. I mean, maybe a tiny bit, but for the most part you're not seeing that. It looks like real video. The edges of the plane are nice and crisp. I don't think I have anti-aliasing dialed all the way up. I could probably do it slightly better, but I think it does look pretty good. So I liked the burgundy livery in the sunlight. I don't like it so much now a little bit like a burnt red or something. I was expecting a little more blue in the burgundy. It would be nice to find out how to create my own memories. It's probably just a matter of filling out a big bitmap with a bunch of pieces of graphics. I like that shot. Seeing some anti-aliasing stuff here. I'm imagining the time-based anti-aliasing can't deal with the large amount of change happening. Or maybe that's just uh, you know, surface reflections. Or I don't know. Anyway, I'm 
not that picky. It looks great to me. I recently bought an uninterruptible power supply, which I've got my Alienware R11 hooked up to. And it averages around 100 watts, 150 watts, without using the graphics. And it can shoot up as high as 700 watts when I'm playing the game. I assume that's both the GPU and the CPU's CPU cores together. It's amazing to see that it can shoot up so high. Okay, this is the point in the flight I will typically take over from autopilot and get ready to land. I need to start slowing down. So let's go back inside. I'm going to disengage autopilot. Okay, that's disengaged. And let's keep it on course. Let's keep from losing any altitude, but I do need to drop speed, so I'm going to pull the throttle down. My goal now is to get it down to flap speed. Could do a little bit of a climb to take off some of that speed, but I'll have to give it back later. slowing down too much. I'm going to drop it some more. So I've got it pretty far down, as you can see by those dials. I'm a little bit off course. It's not such a bad thing because I can use that to soak up some of the forward momentum. getting in the habit of hitting B to check on the barometer, and it was off. It's okay. It's not going to affect us. We are now in flap territory. I'm going to put the flaps down halfway. And I think that I can keep us going without having to change throttle, but we'll see. I may have to up throttle. Actually, now that I think about it, the throttle is so far down, I am going to have to give us some throttle, so I'll go to halfway on the stick. And we're going too fast. I'm going to slow down. I don't want to go outside that white line with the flaps down. don't know exactly what that means. Maybe the flaps can't handle the stress in higher speeds. And maybe there's a risk of them falling off. Okay, that chime means we've deviated from our planned altitude by a certain amount, like 10% or something. Alright, I'm going to pull back on the throttle some more and let's try to get the speed down a bit more. I can put the flaps down all the way. Let's do that. Landing gear. And landing, landing gear, gear, of course. Landing gear. Landing gear. Okay, we're dropping speed quickly, so I'm going to go throttle back up to halfway p on the stick. I always have to be told to put the landing gear down. I need to get in the habit of doing that. I don't know at what point, you know, what uh, altitude you're supposed to do that. Speaking of altitude, we're a little up there. It's okay though, I think. Jacksonville Tower KH391 is 11 miles south with Whiskey to land. KH391 Jacksonville Tower. Enter left base runway 8. Altimeter tree zero decimal tree two wind zero four six at one two. Enter left base runway eight KH tree nine one. All right. So there's the landing pattern way over there. Okay. All right. We can afford to go a bit faster to get ourselves over. So I'm just pushing up on the throttle a little bit. I hear the engine's working harder. We're not getting a lot of speed out of it, but 
we're not dropping either, so I think that's good enough. And I can drop a little bit of altitude and get some speed back. better at the micro adjustments to keep keeping the plane stable. Okay, we're climbing again. I'm gonna drop us down a bit. Looks like the landing pattern entrance is around 2000. Push a little harder with the stick to, to uh, nose down just because of the flaps being down all the way. So we'll just make our way over there. there, a little on the high side. I'm going to pull back on the throttle a bit, give us a better chance of dropping and not getting too much speed. I feel like I'm coming in right over the airport, which is probably not what I'm supposed to do. start making my turn over there. Fast, yep, we'll slow down once we make the turn. Alright, I'm 
going to hug the right side again. Which helps me stay centered on the runway. Also makes the left turns a little easier. Okay, our speed is good. Everything looks good so far. Landing gear's down, flaps are down all the way. Got the sun in our face, but it's filtered, so it's not bad. Coming up on a turn here. Watching my speed. We're obviously slowing down. We'll start getting some speed though as we decline, as we descend faster. Okay, I'm gonna head over back towards the right side again. Each turn, each leg goes down a little faster than the previous one. It's probably intentional. Let you take better advantage of turning your altitude into forward momentum. I am going to need to slow down though, so because we're about to land. So let's drop throttle down to like 25 percent. I'm going to go wide on this a little bit. That's a little crazy. Uh, it's difficult to do to so many things at the same time, and so I was thinking about the throttle, the airspeed, uh, which I am watching, keeping an eye on that. Uh, I think I need to throttle up some more for safety. Okay, I can get a little bit more centered up on this runway, I think. Too much speed, I can tell. Okay, I'm going to drop throttle quite a bit because we may have enough speed to carry us through. Here. I need to nose up so we can make it onto the tarmac. I'm going to give it a little bit of thrust just for, to be sure. Alright, so here we come, and we're going to try to hover as long as we can here. Okay, rear wheels down, front wheel down, flaps up, throttle down, and brakes. Okay, so let's head to the next taxiway. It's giving us the arrow already. Speed is good. So we need to contact ground and ask for taxi to parking. 
Jacksonville ground KH391 request taxi to parking. Taxi to General Aviation Parking using Taxiway Bravo Delta Alpha. Bravo Delta Alpha. Taxiing to General Aviation Parking via Taxiway Bravo Delta Alpha KH391. So the local time here in Jacksonville is 4.42 p.m. The weather is mixed to dry. Uh, I'm not sure what the temperature outside is. I'll check it when we park. Sun is on its way down, that's why it's so dark out. I'm on the west coast, so I have to do my flights carefully so I actually can do them during the day. Thought about maybe waking up super early and doing a sunrise flight, that might be kind of nice. Okay, I'm going a little bit fast, so let's slow down. Sorry to my passengers for all their spilled coffee. Yeah, I suppose I'm supposed to follow these lines technically. I should probably do that. Just follow procedure. Again, we're going a bit fast. I feel like we're rolling downhill a little bit. Got the throttle. Oh no, I didn't have the throttle all the way down. Okay, that's part of the problem. Usually, once you get going, you can idle and just stay going forward. Looks like some planes there with different liveries. I wonder if it chooses those at random. Asia, or it might be ones I've chosen. I don't know. Interesting. I'll have to, I'll have to figure that out. Okay, is this still a taxiway, or is yeah? I guess this is still a taxiway. Nothing particularly fast about air travel. It's fast when you're in the air, but otherwise, things call, uh, slow down to a crawl. But it's for safety, so it's a good thing. Okay, a little braking and a little turning. Give it some thrust. I think we have quite a ways to go still. I've got another turn coming up. I should maybe try to pick runways that are closer to general aviation parking if I can, if I can figure that out. Okay, I'm trying to do smooth combinations of braking and rudder turning. That worked pretty well. Head fast for uh, regulation taxiing. Should be under 20. I kind of like how this airport is laid out. It seems like the taxiing is very easy to follow. Some airports are super confusing, probably because of all the crisscrossing spaces. Okay, a braking rudder. I didn't realize I was going so fast also. Engines idling. Okay, I see the parking spot now. Oh, the water looks really pretty over here. It's really too bad you can't actually get out and 
look, I mean, with the drone you can sort of do that, but it'd be nice to be able to get out as an actual character and look at stuff like that. Okay, this looks beautiful. Interesting. So there's nobody here, but uh, at least I did find a place to park, so it's self service. Parking brake. Engines off. Still haven't figured out how to turn them off using the dashboard. While those spin down, I'll take another peek here. These are both off. That's display stuff, battery stuff, generators. Those are in an off position, I believe. Yep. So everything that looks like you could turn it off is off already. <laughs> okay, I'm get rid of that uh, warning there. Oral warning, okay. Turn off the plane. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to share, like, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.